On the 28th of February 2018, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. I think the, the first time I suspected anything was when I uh, realized there was a huge size difference uh, amongst the two testicles. And uh, I went and asked Marion, my wife, about it. And it was, it was hard to tell because it didn't hurt. I don't know why, but there was one night there's just this tugging feeling in my heart that, you know, I should at least just get a doctor's opinion. Thankfully, we have a doctor friend, Jinan. Thank you so much. So I just described what I felt. He asked me to immediately see him when we went to his place at night. And um, we were all smiling and laughing, talking about stuff. And then it was very casual. He just said, okay, come on, let, just let me take a look. The moment he inspected, his face changed and he was like, you, you have to go hospital right now. The next day, he entered the clinic. Dr. Bajo Hisham, he was very, very chill, very casual. I told him that I felt like my left testicle was bigger than usual. So he casually says, okay, let me have a look. But the moment he inspected it, <laughs> his face changed. I had to go for ultrasound. Imagine the baby ultrasound, but yeah, for the... For, for the balls. <laughs> Results are out, and we were called in for, you know, the final diagnosis. And he just pointed out, okay, so this is your, the results. It's huge. When you have a tumor, it is 99%. He just like, let Pointed us read it. So it's 99%. Cancer. It read like, cancer. We had a friend yeah. with us at that time who was there during the diagnosis. And um, after the doctor announced the cancer thing, it was very serious. And our friend just went like, Hey, uh, just a question, doc. Um, can it still go up? Or like, how does this work? And then I was embarrassed. And Jared was like, wow, just ignore my friend. But the doctor assured us that, you know, everything will be functioning like normal. Yeah. It doesn't affect that. Yeah. You will still be able to have a baby. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Right? So in so. case you are curious, if you have only one ball, you can still make babies. We made a decision right there and then. It's like, okay, so when's the soonest you can do this and the doctor's like, uh, next morning. Yeah, next morning, 8 a.m. And yeah. we're like, okay, let's do it. During the day, we had our friend, the one that asked about the whole like boner thing and all that. He he kind of like lightened the situation for the both of us. All at the same time, right, we had all sorts of like heavy emotion that we try to keep pushing it down so that, you know, we don't want to feel overwhelmed by it. And I don't know whether that was really a good thing because by the time the night hits and uh, we were just alone in our room, the realization of Jared actually having cancer just suddenly really hit the both of us really hard. I try to be strong. Um, and then uh, uh, at one point, I think like, because like there's a couch that could like kind of pull apart into a uh, bed kind of thing. And Jared was on his hospital bed and I think at that point he thought that okay you know what I'm just gonna like sleep next to you for the night and I thought like okay sure and when he hopped over to my side of the bed thing I think that's when like I started to feel quite vulnerable and like when he hugged me I could sense his fear as well or, and I could sense his like worry about me as well and I think that's when like that broke the camel's back like that's when I just started to like cry even then I did not even want to like show him I'm crying I'm just like trying my best to just <clears throat> look this side but tears were already like flowing flowing and flowing uh, safe to say we did not sleep at all until 5 30 uh, a.m. until the nurse came in super tired so just showered put on uh, whatever gown that they asked me to put on yeah. and then they said just lie on the bed and they said uh, They'll be back by 7 to like bring me there. They'll just push the whole bed there. So the anesthetic doctor came by and started with uh, small talks. And in my head, it's like, okay, I guess this is what he does all the time. I didn't mind. I just talked to him to keep my mind off things, even though they were pushing me into the... Uh, Operating the, theater. Yeah, the theater. And the next thing I know, the nurse just said, like, okay, you scrang, then I'll do, yeah? Then I'm like, Huh? Okay. Uh, 
and the next sensation was uh, oh someone God. asking me to wake up and I opened my eyes and first thing in my mind was like oh my god it, it, has it started? Uh, did I wake up halfway? is it over? or what? but I was not in the operating theatre anymore uh, and the nurses around me looked at me and said so uh, operation's over does it hurt? when she asked this line does it hurt? 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 then oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah it hurts a lot <laughs> uh, and they told me that I, yeah, I'm not allowed to take any painkillers because I had to go for MRI to see if the cancer cells spread to other parts of my body so I had to bear with uh, the pain I was just like oh my god I was like felt so drought and at the same time the pain was just like mm. He came in with uh, the blanket up to his mouth and I thought wow it must be so cold and dry that his lips are chapped that he covered it on purpose so I thought alright maybe it's dry lips right then the closer I inspected I realized he's actually biting really hard onto the bed cover that's when I realized like oh my gosh he must be and then when I looked at Jared I realized he's been doing this the whole time he's like biting onto the bed cover and he's like yeah. Like that, like over and over, and he couldn't say anything, and I realized how much pain he was in, you know? Uh, this whole sharing session is not really about uh, gaining your sympathy or for you to empathize with me, but it's more of wanting to spread out a message that, you know, when you gotta check, this testicular cancer case is equivalent to breast cancer for women. It's something that you can check, detect and catch it yourself. Cancer is something that won't hurt you when it's growing. You won't feel pain. You won't feel abnormality, let's say, if it's in internal, right? You just feel like it's normal. Until um, something serious happens. You can actually check. Uh, just Google how to check for testicular cancer, how to check for breast cancer. You can examine yourself. If not, if you feel like there's something wrong, just go to a doctor and ask for a second opinion. The doctor did say that if it hurts, uh, it's most likely uh, an infection, you know. Um, yeah, and it's minor. Yeah, mm. but if it doesn't hurt and you see a change in size or you feel it's something heavy, something's tugging, um, that's when you really should just immediately get it checked. I think Jared's really lucky that he caught it. Even though it's a little bit late, one month is considered quite long for allowing the tumour to grow that big and it could have really easily spread uh, elsewhere through his lymph nodes. So the doctor said he was extremely lucky that when he was operating Jared, he saw that it has not spread elsewhere. And I think, yeah, I mean, we really caught it in the nick of time. This happens to men from 20 to 45 years old. Yeah. So within the age gap, which is quite wide, uh, and it happens randomly, and it's very hard to tell the cause. Yeah. I think that's why cancer is so dangerous because uh, when you said, does it hurt? I'm like, no. Then straight away he knew it's serious. Every guy out there should at least examine themselves. Mm. Like, and even for girls, for breast cancer, yeah. you know, check for lumps. Yeah. Uh, avoid it early and you'll be safe. As you are watching this video, it's not over because um, the biopsy results not out yet. After they inspect the tumour, if it's uh, an aggressive one, I have to go for chemotherapy. Yeah. Um, but we don't know if I have to yet because the MRI scan came, the cancer cells did not spread to any other part of my body. Yeah. Thank God for that, uh, which means I'm not going to die. You'll be seeing more videos, it's just whether I need to go for chemotherapy. Yeah. yeah. Wow, the audience has to wait until this moment in the video to find out that you're okay. Yeah, and I'm sure some people just fast forward and don't care about the middle. Shout out to Jane, who, when, uh, when I just heard this first diagnosis, I think she was the first person I kind of like reached out to and I just felt like I didn't want to like share the news with a lot of other people. Um, she's my best friend and I think she helped like um, put words of comfort. Uh, she shared words of comfort and she shared prayers that helped the both of us and I just want to shout out to you Jane, thanks a lot for uh, being there and being so strong yeah. as well. Uh, bringing that into perspective, I think when things like that happen, it's very important to have 
uh, people around you, be around you, uh, it will definitely help whatever emotions that you are going through at that time. Uh, you need the support, it, yeah. You know, being alone would definitely multi this... multiply whatever that's going on in your mind. So guys, based on this experience, which is not over yet, um, still waiting for results to see if I have to go for chemotherapy or not, I feel that given uh, human nature, it's easy for us to just be mean to people and especially if you're in a lot of pain and if you're going through tough times, um, I'm just telling everyone to be kind because like me, I'll always put on a cheery smile, I'll, I'll you know, be positive around people and you can't tell. You can't tell what kind of hardships one is going through. So always be kind. We'll never know unless we talk, unless we know. I'd like you guys to also check out Cancer Research Malaysia. They're the only non-profit research institute that's focusing on reversing cancer. You can support by heading down to APW Bangsa for World Reverse Cancer Day on the 31st of March to 2nd of April 2018 to learn and find out more about reverse cancer and also how we combat this disease. So please support, don't forget to subscribe, watch our previous videos because all of this means a lot, even more right now. Thank you, comment below, like, see you next time.